Welcome to grade 10 math. We are in unit two, chapter five, and lesson three, solving linear systems using elimination. So again, we have a recap of what a linear system is, is when two lines are interacting, two or more lines are interacting, and uh, they cross at some point usually, unless they're parallel. And wherever they cross is called a solution. And so our job here is We've learned how to solve it by graphing and then find where they cross. We've learned by substitution, and today we're learning by a skill called elimination. This will help us find the exact solution to a linear problem. Again, we mentioned that sometimes graphing you might not get as accurate because you're going to be in between grid lines or you're dealing with really large numbers and it's hard to find that on a graph. Um, so let's just quickly recap um, substitution so that we can be able to compare the two difference and what from my experience is uh, grade 10 students are 50 50 down the middle they either love substitution or they love elimination it's sort of you figure out which one you like the best all right here we want to uh, solve the linear system using substitution so yesterday's lesson okay or the previous lesson not necessarily maybe yesterday but the previous lesson and then so we always said like if we could isolate y uh, or y or x then it makes it easier because then we would have this um, right side that we could substitute into the other y and we also said that we always call one equation one and one and the other equation two so in this case we are going to substitute two into one so sub two into one. So if we do that, we write out uh, number number one is x plus three. Now we're going to put this in for the y. So let's make a bracket for the y to substitute. And of course, we're substituting this whole thing here. So two x minus one. So in this uh, scenario, we have to do distributive property. So x plus, so then we ask, what's 3 times 2? 3 times 2 is 6, and the x is there too. Then what is 3 times negative 1? 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Nothing has changed on the remainder of the equation. So now we look for like terms and gather our like terms. So we have a 1 plus 6 is 7x. We have a negative 3 plus 3 is 0, actually. So that makes it pretty easy. Well, what is 7x equals 0? Well, divide both sides by 7. Anything, 0 divided by anything is 0. So that's possible. So it's going through the x-axis at 0 or the y-axis of zero. Okay, so how do we now solve the y? We need to find the y now. So find the y by substituting, so comma, sub x equals zero into, and again, you choose which one do you like better. Um, the nice thing is number two is already isolated the y. So that makes it less work. So we're going to substitute into the y, well, number 2. OK, so y equals 2x. Again, the x is going to be replaced by 0. So y equals, that cancels, negative 1. So therefore, the point of intersection is 0, negative 1. Now, our question did ask us to check it. So check. How do we check? Left side equals right side. So again, choose one that's uh, uh, maybe simpler. Uh, number two looks a lot easier. Equation number two, so um, equation two, so y equals on the left side and on the right side it's 2x minus 1. We put in our both our values. 
So we said y would be negative 1, and we said x would be 0. y is negative 1, and that would cancel, leaving us negative 1. So left side equals right side, and we proved that it's right. So therefore, 0, negative 1 is the solution. Now we can say it confidently. All right, that's a recap of the substitution method. Today we are moving on to something called elimination. So when we are using elimination, we can find the exact solution of a linear system. So our steps to solving, um, elimin uh, solving linear systems using elimination uh, works best or often when it is in uh, standard form. So when we look at the two equations, we decide which variable is easiest to eliminate, which one has the same coefficient for both e equations. Decide whether uh, to add or subtract. Okay, so add or subtract to eliminate the variables. Perform the, the adding or subtracting and solve the variable. Sub into one of the equations and solve for the other, just like we did. So at this point, at this point, uh, this is the same as substitution method. You know, when we finally find the x or we find the y and then we substitute it into the other to find the other. Okay, so this is, um, we want to find which ones work together. So look at this. There's a 1x here and a 1x here. So these are exactly what we're looking for. Which is easiest to eliminate? The x's. Now they're both positive, so we are going to have to subtract them. So this is, uh, just bear with me here, and we're going to sort this out. So we're going to write this like old old style subtraction and addition. We're going to put one over the other. So one is one as x minus y equals two, and two is x plus y equals eight. Now, okay, so we make it like an addition or subtraction. Now the thing is, these won't eliminate. If we add these, it, we're going to get 2x. So we don't want to add. We don't want to add. We want to do the reverse. We're going to subtract. So let's say we are subtracting. So if we subtract, that means we look at everything vertically, and it changes the signs. So what happens when I do... 1 minus 1, I get 0x. What if I have 1 minus, change that to a minus, 1 minus 2 is negative 3y's. What about 2 minus 8 is negative 6? Okay, so now we've been able to eliminate the x, and now we have just negative 3y equals negative 6, just like we would do any other algebra problem, we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. We get y equals, well, that cancels to positive 1, and negative negative is a positive 2. So y must be 2. That's great. So we have to then, this is where we said everything is the same as substitution. So what did we do next? Okay, so sub y equals 2 into one of the equations. Which ones do you like? Well, they're both pretty easy. Perhaps number 1 is easier. Okay, so 1 and x minus y equals 2. So x, and now we're going to put y equals In there y equals 2 so x minus 2 equals 2 
and we're going to bring that 2 over to this side, and we have y equals 2 plus 2, or sorry, x equals 2 plus 2, x equals 4. Great. And it also wants us to check, so, so basically, therefore, POI is 4 for x, 2 for y. If we were to check this, we have our left side and our right side. And we can take, uh, let's take number one because we have it ready. X minus Y equals two. If we were to do that, we would put four in for X, two in for Y, and we get two. So left side equals right side. And we must be correct. All right, good. So why don't you, you should uh, pause the video and try this one on your own. See if you can do it. All right, we're back and we'll try this together now. Again, number uh, label one, uh, equation one and equation two. And then we look at our numbers and we see that both the X and Y are good candidates. The one thing I want you to look for, it's actually always an advantage, is if one of them is a negative and one is a positive. That's the best situation when that happens because it's going to make eliminating them very easy. So let's start by li listing our two equations um, vertically x minus y equals 4. So because there are s different symbols, like don't always go by the first one. Here it worked out that we went by the first one. But here, look at the middle one. They're going to automatically cancel. So we just want to add them because adding a plus and a negative will just cancel. So if we add 1x plus 1x, we'll get 2x. If we add 1x minus one, or one, one y minus one y, we're going to get zero y's. And if I add, so we're adding here, six plus four is 10. So clean that up and we have two x equals 10. Divide both by two and x equals five. All right, we substitute that in. sub x equals 5 into, well, whichever one you want. Um, maybe you don't like negatives. And if we went into 1, we would avoid y being a negative. So x plus y equals 6. Here's a little idea. You could uh, bring the x over ahead of time and isolate your y. doesn't really matter which order you do things when it comes to that. So y equals 6 minus 5. y equals 1. There we go. Now we have a POI. Therefore, our point of intersection is 5, 1. Of course, now we can check that. It's our left and right t-chart. And again, I would say that number one is probably easier because it's all positive. x plus y equals 6. And so 5 plus 1 is 6 also. So left side equals right side. And now we've proven that. Our, PO, our POI, our point of intersection, is the solution. Okay, we're going to continue with our elimination problems. And again, the clue is always to look for uh, what two uh, coefficients would work best together. And so here we see 
we see these threes. The threes match up well. If you look at the Ys, there's nothing that matches up well. Uh, what I like about these threes is that one's negative and one's positive. So that's going to make it easy to eliminate because uh, anytime you can do addition, it's a little simpler than uh, thinking about the subtraction one. So if we take these two and we call one of them one, the second is two. All right, and we uh, give yourself a little sp space here so that you can choose if it's addition or subtraction. Okay, and we write those out one underneath the other. You can put the one there if it helps you remember. So why don't you pause the video and you uh, solve for one of the variables and then uh, substitute into the equation again and solve for the other variable and see if you can do this on your own. So pause. Okay, well, now we're back. So, all right. Um, well, this is a good combination. These ones uh, cancel out. So we're going to have 0x. And then here, we're again, we're adding here. So, you know, in the previous two examples, we, we wrote down what our function is, adding. So uh, 4 plus 1 is 5y. And this is where you have to think of your, you know, it's 7 plus negative 2. So it's not 7 plus 2, it's 7 plus negative 2 is the difference of 5. Uh, they've given us real nice numbers here. 5y equals 5. And again, divide both sides by 5. And y equals 1. So uh, we need some space here. Um, I think we, if we give ourselves that half to try d after. So we'll bring this back up here. We're going to sub y equals 1 into, again, looking at both. Um, is there a preference there? Well, this one has positive and nothing with the, no coefficient on the y, so I find that makes it a little easier compared to this one. So I'm going to put it into 2. Okay, so 3x plus y equals negative 2. 3x plus a 1 goes in equals negative 2. Okay, we're going to bring this one over to match up with the other um, normal number constant. 3x equals negative 2 minus 1. And so 3x equals negative 3. Look at these nice numbers that they have us doing. That's uh, convenient. So because there's a 3 here, we're dividing both sides by 3, both terms. And x equals negative 1. So uh, maybe we won't have a room for checking. But uh, again, I encourage you to do checks just when you're not too sure. It's always a good idea. So therefore, the POI is neg oh, what am I doing? negative 1. Negative 1 for the x. Remember, always put the x first and then the y. All right, let's try uh, this next one. So pause the video, and I want you to see if you can do this one on your own. And um, and solve it, uh, and go all the way, go all the way to solving the x and the y variables. So pause. Oh, now we're back from. Hopefully you paused it and gave yourself a chance here to try it on your own. So do we see anything that's going to work out here? Well, the x's don't match up, but look, the threes are both negative y's. So that's okay um, because they're the same. We're going to want to subtract. So, um, so uh, give yourself lots of room here. Um, so go three uh, x minus three y equals negative two, and number two is two x minus three y equals negative four. So here's the problem, right? If we add these two, we're going to get negative six y. Uh, but if I subtract them, what will happen to the second one? The sign will change. So we want to do subtraction. And so that means this sign is going to change to a negative. This is going to be a positive. 
this is going to be a positive when we actually do the function. All right, so let's try this out. So a 1, a 1 minus 2 is negative 1x. Okay, make sure you're okay with that. 1 minus 2 is negative 1x. Okay, the negative 3, now minus minus, makes a plus, is cancels. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure we cancel one of the variables, in this case y. A negative 2 uh, minus minus means a plus is positive 2. So we have cleaned that up. Negative x, negative 1x equals 2. We can't leave it that way, so divide everything by negative 1. And we have x equals negative 2. There's our x. Okay, so let's sub into sub into which one looks easier to you? Um, well, maybe just number one because it's sort of it has less to multiply by uh, into one. That wasn't very clear. Yeah, we want these notes to look good, but into one. So here we go. So one looks like one x minus three y equals negative two. Um, one times negative two, because that's where that's coming from. Minus three y equals negative two. And we have negative two minus three y equals negative two. We're gonna keep going here. Uh, one thing you might see is we have a negative y. We could bring that over and bring this over and get our y to be positive. So negative two minus negative two equals three, positive three y. And we have negative four equals three y. And we're whittling this down to negative three over four y, because we're going to divide both sides by negative three. OK, so not a perfect number there, um, which is fine. Uh, let's just make sure, you know, we did everything right. Um, yeah, no, that's, everything worked out OK. Just that's what you're going to get, some problems where it ends up being a fraction, perhaps. Negative, oh, no, negative 2, yeah, negative 4 over 3. Uh, 4 over 3 would be 1 and 1 third, so you could say, or negative 2 and negative 1. And three, 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 for example. That wasn't very clear. Negative two and negative one point three three, for example. Okay, good. So this gets a little more uh, complicated in the next step here. We've had, so far we had numbers that work out nicely. The three matched, the three matched. Sometimes it was one and a negative one. Um, so but that's not always the case. Um, so what happens when the, you don't have two terms that are similar? Okay, well, you might have to do some multiplication of the entire equation to get to two terms to be the same. So multiply one or both, sometimes both, equations to get two similar terms. The coefficients must be the same sign. Um, the sign doesn't have to be. Okay, the coefficients have to be the same. The sign doesn't have to be. Then eliminate following the same steps as before. So example, solve this, the following linear systems using the method of elimination. Okay. So you'll notice, look at the x's, nothing matches. Look at the y's, nothing matches. So we can still start off the same. One, two x plus five y equals 16. And two, we have x minus y equals one. So it said, back to this advice, multiply one or both. Is there something we could do to one of these coefficients to get them to be matching. So, well, it wouldn't take much to take make 
uh, this into it. This is a one. Make this into two. So if I multiply everything by a factor of two, what would that look like? So I would multiply times two, times two, times two. So let's try that again. So then one equals two, repeat. Okay, and what's the next one going to look like? Well, two times one is two x. Two times negative y is negative two y. And two times one is two. All right, now we're closer because now these match up. But when they're the same sign, okay, if they're the same sign, then you must subtract. Okay, so we're going to subtract. And that changes all our signs to the opposite. So, 2 minus 2 is 0x. That's what we wanted. 5 plus 2 is 7y. And 16 minus 2 is 14. Oh, look at these numbers work out nicely. So, so divide both sides by 7. Of course, we don't have to worry about that. 0x, it doesn't matter. y equals 2. Very good. All right, so let's move down, and we're going to substitute. You can tell these, these get quite long. So substitute y equals 2 into one of the equations. This is where it doesn't matter if you're doing substitution or elimination. From this point on, once you know one equation, then you solve for the other. I Looking at these two equations, number 2 is definitely less work. So pick number 2. All right, so number 2 was x minus y equals 1. And so x minus, and then that's where we're putting that, filling in the bracket there. And, oh. Um, y is 2. There we go. So x minus 2 equals 1. We're going to bring this over x equals 1 plus 2. Give myself some more room here. And x equals 3. So now we have a point of intersection. Point of intersection is 3, 2. All right, let's uh, check. Let's do a check. Left side, right side. Again, choose the easier of the two equations. Definitely number two is easier. X minus Y equals one. So if X is three and Y is two, that's a difference of one. So left side equals right side. That means our point of intersection was correct. Okay. So you can tell it's not hard math, uh, difficult math operations, but it's it's that step-by-step -step process that we have to follow. And uh, so you don't want to lose track of that. Okay, that was a fairly easy one because we just had to multiply the one X to make it to two. Uh, but here we see these combinations don't work out very well. So you can choose. Um, okay, so we could do, you know, three and four make, make 12, or uh, two and five make 10. So it's really up to you which one you want to work with. Um, so I gave you a hint now. Why don't you pause the video and try this one on your own? All right, so we'll continue. But at any point, if you want to pause the video and try this out yourself, uh, that would be fine. The other thing that you might want to consider is um, that they're both negative, uh, both positive. So I'll, I'll show you another trick. Let's say we go with the 10, but I make um, I make one of them like a negative. So, um, okay, again, what am I trying to say here? So let's say we start with 
with equation one, equation two. We go one is three x plus two y equals two. And I want to change this two to a 10. I want to get to 10. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 10. Well, then my next, my line is going to be, well, let's do it this way. Okay, my new, my new equation is going to be 10 times, sorry, what am I, oh, let's back up here. I don't want it, I want it to be 10, but I need to multiply it by 5. So by a scale of 5. So, so five, 5 times 3 is 15. So we're scaling everything up, the whole thing. 5 times 2 is 10. And 5 times 2 is 10. Okay. And the next one, 2. So 2 is different. It's 4x plus 5y equals 12. And we don't want to scale by 5. We want to use the 2. So multiply that by 2. And what do we get? So 2 times 4 is 8x. Oh, I said I would show you a bit of a trick. Um, let's say we don't just make it 2, but we make it a negative 2. Okay, so let's try that. And you're going to see, you're going to like the middle term, the y terms. So negative 2 times uh, negative 4 is negative 8x. Negative 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So here's, here's our elimination. We're going to get that. And negative 2 times 12 is negative 24. Okay, so obviously we have different signs. So we are going to add, all right, 15 plus negative 8 is really a subtraction. These two eliminate each other. And 10 minus 10 plus negative 24 is negative 14. And then we can go with dividing by 7 on both sides x equals negative 2. So by doing, including a negative in here, we already made our subtraction into a, pl a, positive, a plus um, an addition. So sub x equals negative 2 into whichever one you thought was easier. Maybe number 1, let's say. 3, there's our x plus 2y equals 2. Negative 6 plus 2 equals 2. Bring that over. 2y equals 2 plus 6. 2y equals 8. I don't know why that's not printing very well. 2y equals 8. And divide both sides by 2, we get 4. So, kind of helps to <laughs> you flow around and you can use your uh, whole page to solve these. Okay, so therefore, POI is negative 2 and 4. Okay, and we can check. Left side, right side. Okay, so uh, pick any one you want. Let's take number 2 because I can see it right now. 4x plus 5y on the left side and 12 on the right side. So, what is 4 
times negative 2 plus 5 times 4. We have a negative 8 plus 20. And 20 minus 8 is 12. Left side equals right side. Anyway, so I apologize about all that printing. I don't, didn't turn out very well. Okay, now we're ready to try some uh, word problems. And these, uh, the trickiest part with these is deciding out how to get to, to do this first part, writing your linear systems of equations. So here we have a scenario where admissions to a circuit cost $8 per adult and $6 per children. And then a total of 900 tickets are sold for a total of 6000 160. So this is um, challenging because you have to think of uh, two ways to represent this. So we have um, one, the number of tickets sold, and number two, the cost of tickets. So if we could make up an equation um, for the numbers of tickets sold, we have children's tickets and we have adult tickets for a total of 900 tickets. So we don't really know what those are and that's okay. We that's uh, So we could say that um, the number of tickets sold are some sort of adult ticket, some number of adult tickets plus some number of children's tickets. We can say that our cost is cost equaling equaling adult tickets and children's tickets. And we actually know a rate for these. So adult tickets are $8. So as many adult tickets as we have, we're going to multiply by 8. The number of children's tickets would be multiplied by $6. So now we can substitute. Um, so your linear system of equations to represent this situation. So let's just substitute. So it told us that there would be uh, 900 tickets sold. So a number of 900 tickets were sold plus whatever number of adult and uh, children tickets. So those are left as our unknowns. And our total earnings, or the cost of all these tickets, was 6160 and 8A plus 6C. So that would be uh, the way we can represent this system of linear equations. The next thing to do would be to try to solve them. So if we have our equation 1, And we have our equation 2. Then we can look to see, we're trying to do elimination. So you see a combination that we could use here to eliminate. Now here's a hint. We're looking for the, the amount of children tickets. So we don't want to eliminate the C's because that's what we want to find in our final answer down here. So what would we have to do to eliminate the A's? Well, we need this A to also equal 8. And this A can stay at 8. So if we multiply all this factor by 8, then we will have a different equation. So 800 times 900, or sorry, 8 times 900 would be 70, yeah, 7,200, 7,200 equals 8 times A is 8A, 8, 8 times C is 8C. And so this one just continues along. We don't have to change anything here. Uh, one thing you could do is change them all to negatives, and then it would make adding easier. 
So minus 6160 minus 8a and minus eight, uh, 6c. Okay, so let's take 7,200, subtract 6,160, and we get 1,040. These, of course, eliminate. That's what we wanted. And we have 2c. All right. So then we know we can subtract, uh, divide both sides by c, and we can get... So, uh, so d divide both sides by 2, we get 520. So, 520 children, therefore, 520 children child tickets were sold. Now, I didn't ask about adult tickets. Uh, there's no part C, but you could imagine part C being, well, how many child tickets would be sold? If you want to do that, all you have to do is take this one. That's your easiest equation. 900 equals A plus 520. 900 minus 520 equals A. And that's 380. So it didn't ask us to do that, but it, it's not too much of a step t to show that at least. Okay, so uh, these, uh, I'm not making these uh, sound easy. These, uh, these are challenging. It's hard to come up with the system uh, because it's not that straightforward. Okay, um, now number three, Lucy rented a moving van on uh, separate, two separate occasions. The rental company charges a cost per day uh, for the van plus a travel expense per kilometer. The first time she, so uh, the first time Lucy paid 140 for two days and 80 kilometers. Okay, so if we said uh, the charge of the cost per day was X and a cost per kilometer was Y, then a normal payment would be um, the cost equals, you know, something X, something X plus something Y. Okay, so let's try and come up with uh, the two equations. For number one, she it cost her 140 for two days times the rate of the daily rate and plus 80 kilometers times the kilometer rate. So X is the daily rate and Y is the Y is the kilometer rate. Her second drive, her second rental was 215 and at three days and 140 kilometers. So then you ask yourself, well, what's the easiest way to combine these? I think the 80 and the 140 are a little bit of a difficult common multiple to find. But two and three are easy. So here's where you're going to have to make um, changes to both. So let's say we uh, multiply. Well, we want to get to six here. Six will do it. So I want to multiply this by three. And this by, yes, two. But let's make it negative two. And that will change everything to a negative And let us um, subtract these easier. Okay, so what will these look like? So 3 times 140, so 3 times 140 is 420.
four twenty equals three times two is six x and three times eighty is two forty y. Now don't forget we're gonna factor in a negative here to make them all eliminate. So two times two fifteen is negative four thirty. Negative two times three is negative six x and negative two times one forty is negative two eighty. So eliminating these, well, you're reducing it to negative 10. These are going to disappear, of course. And we have negative 40. Oh, sorry, that's red. Negative 40 y. All right, so let's uh, get rid of that 40. Don't forget the negatives. So we are going to have one fourth equals y. Well, that doesn't help us in dollars terms. So one fourth is 25 cents. And there we go. Just bringing us back to this uh, question. It did say write a linear system of equations. We, we kind of did that here. That's a system. So actually, we answered A. This would only be if they had asked a B. Um, question B would have been something like that, right? Uh, what would be the rate per kilometer? In other words, this is the rate per kilometer. And it begs the question, what would happen? What would be the rate per day? So sub y equals 25 cents into, well, again, which one's easier? They're not, neither one are particularly hard, but uh, one looks a little easier. Uh, so here we go. So 140 equals 2x plus 80. And there's our bracket for the y, 0 0.25. Okay, well, 80 times uh, 25 cents is $20. Okay, and we're going to bring this over. So we said 120 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. And we're getting x equals... Sorry for all the color changes. 60. So $60 per day. $60 per day. And 25% of 25 cents per kilometer. That's what we determined. Therefore, therefore, it's all right so there you go that's solving linear systems by elimination and uh, some people like substitution more and some people like elimination more you're going to have to decide that for yourself thanks for watching